fissures and fissure groups. So let's see what kind of fissures can be part of a role. So we see that by doing show role fissure. So these are all the fissures that you actually can make part of a role. Okay. Fissure groups are essentially groups of related fissures. For example, layer three fissure group, which is defined by default. See, what you can do here is, uh, for example, go and create a layer two fissure group and add fissures like spanning tree, VLAN, and so on. So at the point you go and assign the fissure group to the role. So let's create a new role. Creating a new role is very easy. We will create a new role that is allowed to issue the show commands, uh, that is allowed to check basic connectivity by issue pings, and also is able to configure Cisco Discovery Protocol, CDP. Okay, and that's it. After we will create this role, we will define the new, a new user and associate the role that we just created to this particular new user. So let's start. So we will call this uh, role an XOS. Let's start defining the first rule. Rule number one. I want this user to be able to issue show comments, so I have to permit read access. Okay. Now I want to make sure that the user is able to read and write, meaning configure CDP on the system. So rule number two, permit read and write feature CDP. As we said, we want to make sure that the user is able to check connectivity, so we will uh, allow ping. So rule number three, permit command. So you can see the granularity. You can really be as granular as you want, even at the CLI level. So command ping and the star meaning whatever comes after the ping keyword is going to be accepted. I want to also add another rule. I want to make sure that the user is only able to configure a particular interface. So rule number four, this is going to be two um, CLI steps. R rule number four, permit command conf t interface star and also what I'm going to do now is I'm going to define an interface policy that allows only interface uh, uh, that allows the user to configure only for example interface 2 slash 1 so I would say permit interface ethernet 2 slash 1 and we are done so let's see actually the role show role and xos oops show role name and xos here it is as you can see the only interface that is actually permitted is ethernet 2 slash 1 and those are the, the details that we just specify when we create this new role. So let's now create a new user and attach the new role so that uh, we can test. Okay, username are back, password of back role and XOS. All right. So now let's log out and log in again as that particular user. Okay. Are back. Next S120. Here we are. So as you can see, 
most of the com of the command are actually missing. However, the ping functionality is available as you as you saw. So let's try to see if we can ping. Yes, we can. Okay. So there is also debug as a keyword that is available to us. See, as you can see, we can just turn CDP debug on, only CDP, because uh, as you remember, the RBAC user was allowed only to configure CDP. That's, that's a very powerful, this is a very powerful feature that we brought from MDS to the Nexus 7000. So let's see what we can do at the config level. As you can see at the config le level, we can just play with CDP or we can go in interface mode. Okay, so interface Ethernet 2 slash 2. As you can see, the permission is denied because uh, the interface that the has been associated to this role was just 2 slash 1. In fact, if I go, I do interface 2 slash 1, I'm able to get in and I'm also able to configure an IP address. Finally, the slash notation. Okay, as you can see, I can configure the interface. So let's remove this IP address. And this is pretty much it. We conclude here the step number four, role-based access control. We are ready to go to step number five. Step number five, configuration rollback. So an XOS fully supports configuration rollback. This functionality allows allows the customers to revert to a previous configuration state, effectively rolling back configuration changes. So during this step, we will create a checkpoint for the current configuration, we will modify the configuration for an interface, we, at the point we will roll back the configuration and check again the interface to see if the configuration has been removed. So let's start by doing making a checkpoint. We can call it an XOS. So you can do, you can make up to 10 checkpoints per VDC. So when you try to create the checkpoint number 11, the checkpoint number 11 will override the first checkpoint you created, okay? So the checkpoint is being created by the operating system. It takes a while depending on the configuration, as you can imagine. So it's done. So let's check now with show checkpoint summary. We can see the checkpoint. We can also see that when it was created, by whom, and its name. Also, what we can say is what we can see is uh, the checkpoint itself. As you can see, the, that is the checkpoint, the configuration, pretty much. Now, let's go and modify a random interface. For example, 2 slash 3. And we do, we assign a, an IP address. And then we modify some parameters, some configuration, like no IP redirects, no shut. Okay, so if we now do show running interface, E2 slash 3, here it is the interface, here it is the configuration that we just uh, modified. Now let's try to roll back. So roll back, running config, checkpoint, and then we here we specify the checkpoint name and XOS. As you can see, the, checkpo the checkpoint, uh, the, sorry, the, the feature is going to remove all the configuration from the interface. And if we now go and check the interface configuration, the interface configuration is clean. So this is a very powerful feature. As I said, you can do up to 10 checkpoints per virtual, uh, virtual device. So that should be enough, even though we already received the request 